going on guys? So I'm sure you kept up with the progress on the Team Pavel Raptor with us. This customer has been our customer for over four years now and we've been building the truck progressively as he's gone. Every time he goes out off-roading, he realizes, hey, I need this and that. I want to go faster. I want to be able to take these obstacles like whoops smoother and easier and better. So we've been upgrading the truck as he keeps on going along. So on the Team Pavel Raptor, we ended up going with a Curry rear end uh, axle. What we had to do is the truck has already been extensively modified so it wasn't a regular truck. So the bolt-on kit that they provided us didn't work. So we utilized the water jet machine. We cut out the brackets and the plates that we needed. We got the U-bolts uh, U made custom to make it work. Once we got the brackets made and the bolts done, we put it on the truck and we got it running. Having a machine like a water jet is crucial for us because it allows us to make any kind of uh, design shapes or patterns, brackets, if we need to build anything, even if we need to make three dimensional pieces, we can cut them out individually on the water jet and then we weld the pieces together to make let's say an air box or a catch can or anything else it might be. In this case on the Pavel Raptor, we did the U-bolts and the plates for the U-bolts. We cut out on this and the U-bolts we had custom made. So brand new, one of these machines will run you about $300,000. We've had this for over 10 years and we just maintain it and you keep up with it and it still works like the day it was new. So we're installing a rear view mirror. Jordan's wiring in the navigation and he's doing the radio. Got the uh, radio heads mounted up here. You can have an identical set in the back. Nice. Right. Got push to talk buttons on the front of the center console so the uh, passenger and driver can communicate with the CD. So for the Pavo truck, what Jordan went and did is we needed to still maintain operation for the sunroof and the rear sliding window. So Jordan made this custom box, flush mounted the piece in there, and now it's within reach, easily accessible. It's not gonna go anywhere, it's firm in there. Just another example of custom touches. It takes a little bit of time, but we make sure we do it right and make sure that the customer's happy with it. So each one of these light modules is supposed to put out as much light as a 30 inch bar. So what we're doing here is, since we put the curry axle in the rear, uh, the uh, center hub uh, diameter of the curry axle is bigger than what the wheels were uh, meant to accept. So we machined out the center of the wheels to let it allow for that. And then the front wheels had to be machined out as well so the wheels are interchangeable. We had to make uh, spacers for the front wheels and this is what Scott's gonna show us right now. So we'll make uh, steel one of these, put it on the front and it'll be there permanently and then you can run any wheel in any location. You can see it there sandwiched in the front wheel. So while we're finishing up the Team Pavo truck, I want you guys to check out this project. We had a customer of ours bring in his 911 Porsche and he wanted something different. His car was black and he wanted it to be unique. So we sat down, we went through a bunch of color samples and he picked a color that I honestly fell in love with. I was more excited about this car when it was done before the customer even saw it. Check it out, let me know what you guys think. Okay, so the Porsche is cleaned. Now I just have to have a few small areas touched up. So what Manny is doing here is he's masking off all the other body panels that we're not gonna be working on, and he's focusing on the ones that we are. By masking it, we make sure that we don't get any uh, compound in the cracks and crevices, or sometimes you'll get compound down in here into the window. Every time you put your window up and down, it's just dirty. So it takes a little bit longer to do it the right way, but we like doing it the right way, paying attention to detail, making sure that what we do is gonna last and it's not gonna fall apart on the customer and it's not gonna look bad a week or two weeks down the road. Okay, so Manny just finished up buffing uh, the Porsche, got the few spots taken care of, and now Jordan is gonna take the car and get it ready for wrapping. a lot of people ask why are we taking the car apart so much if we're not even going to do the door jams well the reason behind that is we want to do it the right way there's a lot of ways to do something but to do it the right way it takes time and it takes patience and effort what we have done here is we have our mechanics take the vehicles apart and blow them apart as you've seen in the other videos we'll take them apart meticulously we'll make sure everything's cataloged or bagged or put in a specific area so it does not get lost once we do that, 
the vehicle's cleaned and prepped and all that stuff's done, then we wrap it. Once it's fully wrapped, we take the car back into the shop and then we reassemble it by the mechanics. This ensures that we don't lose anything, that nothing's done improperly. Everything gets put back onto the vehicle just like how it was originally. So you're not gonna have any squeaks or rattles or any issues going on with it. On this porch, we've done all the body panels right now. And what we're doing today is we're gonna be doing the bumpers, the trim, all the little pieces to put it back together and we'll get it ready for the customer. Stay tuned, check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Would you guys do a different color or would you guys stick with the color that this customer chose? Another thing that we do is we implement the use of knifeless tape. So that means we never take an actual knife or a blade to the body of the vehicle. We lay down the knifeless tape and we use that to make cuts and then we make sure all the material gets tucked in under the weather stripping or the molding, whatever it might be, to make sure it doesn't lift. But we absolutely make sure that uh, a blade never touches the vehicle surface because in that case, you might scratch it or you might actually gouge the paint. When we're working on pieces like the front rear bumpers, we protect the rest of the vehicle that's already been wrapped with this clear, you know, vinyl protectant to make sure that we're moving everything around. We don't have any issues along the seams. So checking up in the back shop, I was expecting Jordan to still be working on this Porsche, but he already knocked it out. Got everything taken care of, everything's dialed in, ready to go to the customer. So we decided to do a couple of modifications while the car was in here. First of all, those side markers came in and they were yellow. Uh, I thought they didn't look good, so I called uh, our customer, I said, hey, why don't we change them up? He went with our recommendation, so we got the clear ones and I think it looks beautiful in clear so we got that done so first traditionally we always do the entire mirror we cover so meaning we go all the way into the mirror and we completely wrap everything inside outside that's why we had it apart so much but when it was apart i realized we have this cut line here and we have black accents throughout the vehicle so we have black there we have black on the fins right here we left the antenna black there was a lot of black accents and also the front has a couple black accents in the bumper so instead of wrapping that I figured let's keep it unwrapped and let's accentuate it so it's gonna be a tie-in with all the other black accents and the wheels so the Carrera is behind me we just finished it we wrapped it in a satin dark gray from 3m it looks phenomenal. I'm excited for the customer to check it out. So the Team Pavel Raptor, it's done. I'm sure you guys have seen the progress, seen how we've been building it all along. And uh, we're gonna go, you know, uh, just take it on a road test to see how it holds up. desert and we have Duman out here he's the owner of the Raptor and we're doing our shakedown test Duman what'd you think right after you took that jump what did it feel like wow, it was amazing honestly I couldn't believe how well the truck handled it just took off and the landing was as smooth as butter it was incredible I mean I've been out here a few times before I got the truck redone and definitely couldn't have done anything like that before but this is, is seriously a business so as you guys see behind me I have Eric and Ray with me why did we bring them because we're shaking the truck down so stuff might come loose or move around and that's what we're here for. We're trying to make sure that we dial in the truck the right way for him and so when he's running on his own, he's not gonna have any issues. So let's go do some more shakedown testing.
kind of stuck on the side of a mountain and we had a little bit of a, an issue. So I'm trying to pull him straight because the way he's going, he's going to be going towards the edge. We had an awesome day. Every day you're out, you learn something new. So we learned that uh, those like goat trails that we were on probably weren't the best trails for these raptors because it was a little bit too wide for us. But we had a good time. We had a transfer case that kind of uh, went out on us, but not a problem. We fixed it. The truck's still good to go to drive home. Uh, everyone's in one piece. Uh, Some body damage. My bumper took a big hit. Uh, it's kind of a frowny face instead of a smiley face, but we're good to go. Everyone's safe and we're heading back home. Damon, you ready to do it again? Oh, definitely. I mean, we had a little scares, but definitely had a lot of fun today back out again if you guys like what you saw hit the like button below if you have any comments or anything to say to us please comment below and as always if you guys can dream it we can build it <laughs> <laughs>